really excited today to have um, Imba Oren here with us. Uh, Imba is a methodologist and safe fellow at Scaled Agile. Uh, I feel like his early fame was the uh, safe in five minutes video or, or something like that. I met him in uh, 2014, which was in the height of his safe in five minutes fame. Um, and he and I were both in Boulder, Colorado, becoming SPCTs. Strangely enough, or coincidentally, uh, Adrian was a participant in that class, in the SPC class that uh, Imbar and I were observing and um, uh, trying to uh, answer weird questions from Daring, as I recall. Uh, anyway, uh, that's um, how I met uh, Imbar. He joined uh, Scout Agile, I don't know, about somewhere in the six months, it feels like, after, after that. And um, now he's like the, yeah, he's, he's like mini Dean. Uh, so anyway, because he's, um, he's a good friend and because I thought it might be fun and there's um, some new content in Safe from 5.1, I asked Imba to come and share that content with you guys and um, most importantly, uh, answer, answer your questions. So uh, what I'm going to get you to do is drop your questions into, into chat. Um, and then uh, we'll get Imba to, to um, pick them up at appropriate breaks. Uh, obviously, people will probably keep dropping in during the course of the, the call, but for now, um, Imba, welcome and thank you, and the floor is yours. And he's on mute. <laughs> It'll be a very quiet presentation today. Of course, I'm on mute. That's how I start all my conversations. That's a quiet. <laughs> I, I, I don't think any, I've heard any anything, um, any any word more than you're on mute since this whole thing started. <laughs> so, I, I'm just used to it. Well, thanks for for inviting me. I'm happy to be here today. Um, I I have some content, but. Um, it, there's not a ton of it, and I'd rather that you ask any questions you have, and and ask any questions you have while you have it, and 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 we can go into what I'm presenting right now. But any other thing about the the past, and I'll just do a quick introduction of myself. Um, so I've been a, a developer. I started in the software side of things, a team lead, project manager, product manager. And then uh, I kind of slipped into Agile by mistake. I was working for, I was, I left the company. I was founding my own startup and then I needed some money. So I went to a friend and said, do you have some temp job? And he said, sure, come program for us. So I came in and then they were moving to Agile. And he said, I need somebody to lead this transformation. I said, I don't know what Agile is and it sounds fishy. Uh, and he said, okay, I don't know what it is either, but I need somebody to lead it. And I said, okay. So I, 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 I took the responsibility. I was Scrum Master for three teams and it went great. It really changed the, the organization. And so when I left there, I actually started working in Agile and, and helping companies transform. And then, in, then I met Dean. I was try, starting to, to do Agile more at scale. Um, met Dean started doing safe and seeing great results, which is how I ended up with M in 2014 in Boulder, Colorado. Um, she was coming from Australia. I was coming from Israel to try to figure out how to take the next step. And about six months later, I mean, even, even back then, even in September 14, I was already kind of part-time working with Dean, uh, working on some of the things that never happened called Safe for Lean System Engineering, uh, which eventually coalesced into um, Safe 4.0. And I've, I've since worked on the, uh, on the firmware team. So I was part of a little bit of 3.0 and then 4.0 and 4.5 and 4.6 and 5.0 and 5.1. So if you have any question of why things became the way they are, I, there's a good chance I know the answer. I'm not saying I'm not you like the answer, but I probably know the answer. Um, so I've been part of the framework team working with Dean very closely for, for many, 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 many years. I moved to Boulder, Colorado. And so I had a lot of, um, I, I, I was there with Dean daily 
and then it was too much and I just moved back. <laughs> I've been doing martial arts for even longer than I've been doing this. Uh, and it's a testament to my not being great at how, how, how bad I still am at this so many years later, but I keep doing it. Um, it provides me, a, I think, a reference for everything else I do. And then because we're doing everything at scale, I also do family at scale. I have uh, five kids with two sets of twins, which means somebody behind me was not happy that I could not take kids to school today and had to be here instead. But it is what it is. At least it wasn't raining. It was supposed to rain. So you got to take the victories. This is us in New York in uh, right before everything at COVID hit. So we got to do that before we came back. So that was nice. But today, we're not talking about that. We're talking about SAFE. And SAFE has a, a, a long history. Uh, started kind of as an, an, an idea in Dean's head. Um, became kind of a picture in his book about agile requirements. And then Dean was badgered. Um, very seriously by a few individuals to come fund the company, which he didn't want to do because he was, um, he was retired and he liked being retired, which I think is funny because of the fact that now he's back and the people who badgered him are retired. So I think that's, that, that's a, that for me, that's part of the funny thing. And, and safe kept evolving. I mean, we were out there in the field learning, uh, learning from everybody who was doing it. Uh, everybody was, was, very kind contributing their learning of what is working and what isn't working, safe 2.0, safe 3.0, that versions that never became anything, safe for lead system engineering, 4.0, 4.5, 4.6. And then 5.0, which today we're kind of, with the new version, we're renaming to just safe 5. And the reason we're doing it is because we want to evolve it a little faster than we have in the past. Um, there's so many things we want to change about it. There's so many things that we're getting from the field. There's so many things we want to evolve in it. And, and yet getting out, say, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4 seems to stress some people out there. So we decided to just, we're going to call it, say, 5. And we're going to keep updating it. Some of it's just going to be in the background. We're going to change an article. Some of it's going to be, uh, we're going to add some more advanced topic articles. Some of it's going to be, we're going to change the big picture and there's going to be a new picture, a new version of the big picture, which by the way, we've done in this case and, and we called it 5.1, but not all of them are going to be big picture changes and they're all going to stay as far as name is concerned. They're all going to stay say five um, until such time as say six comes along. And that was kind of a long journey. I'm trying to remember. Safe 3.0 came out roughly around that time, I think, um, kind of 2014. Yeah, that's my memory too. It's funny, the longer you do this, the more you lose track of when the when the changes were. But yeah, I feel like it was um it was around 2014 as well. I remember people saying, Oh my goodness, should we go from 2.5 to three? And I'm like, yes. Yes. So, so, so if 3.0 was in 2014 and 5.0 was in 2016, so there was like, so there's a chance 6.0 isn't coming tomorrow morning, <laughs> but but it will come at some point. Um, and in the meantime, we're trying to to keep updating it, make it more of a continuous process, and uh, and so we're 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 making that change. And so for, for now, it's not going to say say 5.0 for lead enterprises. It's just going to say say 5, whether it's 5.1 or 5.2. And as you can see in the corner, it does say 5.1 because we did release this new picture. It does say 5.1. And while it's 5.1, I think all of you who have seen it, at least in 5.0, can see how similar it is. It's not a huge shift. It's not one of those places where we've said, oh, my God, you, you can't recognize anything. It's, uh, I mean, when we went with 5.0, We've shifted all the competencies to the left. We added business agility. With 4.6, we added even the content competencies. 4.5, all of DevOps came in. 4.0, introduced levels. Simba, this we're is... supposed to be you. We're supposed to be looking at you or the big picture. Uh, there's this kind of screen that says, save five for lean enterprises. 
Well, here it here it says Imba Oren. Well, you know things get take a long time traveling from Israel to Australia. <laughs> oh, there Let we go. Start oh, it's just you can see it. Uh, well, we could, and then you stop sharing. I was trying to 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 start sharing again. Okay. Okay. Let's 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 do that again. Last week I was teaching with Dean, and every every so often, and it started just with me, which is why he called it the inbar bug. It would just stop sharing in the middle of everything. It would just stop sharing, and none of us could explain the why. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Share screen. None of us could explain why it was happening. And then um, it started happening to him as well, which is when he blamed me for making it contagious. But he just couldn't share. It's suddenly in the middle of things, things just froze up. It got to a point where Joe had to set his screen and Dean had to teach by saying next, 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 which is not pretty awkward. Can you see the screen now? We can. Thank you. Perfect. So let's, let's go to this big picture. It's the... This is it, the 5.1. It's very, very, very similar. But there are a few changes that I think are important. And I want to go into them and explain a little bit why we made that change. Um, and maybe what kind of changes this might drive in the future. So that kind of you're, you're, you're getting your, your head into the, where, where our thinking is at. So what did we change in this big picture? Um, well, I think the first one is we've made some changes around value streams. Uh, we've previously with 5.0, we actually called out the value stream very specifically. Here we've renamed it and we've been very specific about talking about development value streams and operational value streams. They've always been there. It's not a new thing in SAFE, but we're now very cognizant about calling them out. And the reason we did that not, was not just to, to make sure people understand that there are development and operational value stream, but it was to create more, more surfaces for articles around how do you deal with development value stream? And how do you deal with operational value streams? Um, this is, uh, I think this is, this is one of the most interesting changes. It drove a change in, in uh, implementing safety that I'm gonna get into later that we've already run two classes with and I think it, it changed the, the way that the value stream identification workshop was going and the, the conversation around it. But it's going to provide even more space in the future to go deeper into how do you improve operational value stream? What's the, how, do we, how do we make them even better? What's the roles that are associated with operational value stream? So it will allow us to go deeper into that. The, the next thing we did is we, we made some changes in the, in the portfolio level. And again, some of them are really subtle, but, but again, they're important. We've added solution boxes at the end of the development value streams. The, again, always there, the value streams always created solutions. You could see it in the lower levels, but they were never that overt in the, um, in the portfolio level, leading a lot of people to miss out on the importance of, of the fact that we're actually building solutions that we're doing. That portfolio is not a generic portfolio that creates, I don't know what, they're creating solutions, business solutions. And so those solutions are out there. And that also ties to the KPIs that directly comes to them and to the value stream KPIs and the solution KPIs. How do we measure those solutions we're creating? And then on the other side of this, we added the participatory budgeting icon. That, had, that too has been with us for a while. It was added to safe with safe 4.6 was there with 5.0, but we felt people were still not finding it. It sometimes rose in implementing safe class, definitely rose up in an LPM class, but people were still missing on, on the concept of participatory budgeting. They saw the lean budget, but they were missing the, the, the participatory nature of creating those budgets. And, and, and they were also missing some of the, okay, let's say we were in implementing safe and then M taught us about participatory budgeting. It was great. There's like a, a whole three slides about it. I want to read more. Well, go find it. Initially, there was nothing in safe. There was a mention in lean budgets. Then we added the, an advanced topic article. And this is one of the interesting things. We, we keep adding advanced topic articles, but nobody finds them. We, 
regardless of where we put them, we are putting them at the, there was a time where they were in the top, there were a time they were in the bottom, they were a time where they were in the side, regardless of where we put them, people don't find them. Um, a long time ago, when we were just introducing DevOps, we were talking about, we, we just made the change of moving the advanced topic articles to the, like, really buy the big picture to make sure people find them. And I, I was on stage and I'm talking about the importance of measuring what we're doing. And I'm giving the example that, that we need to measure our work and we just release some stuff and we just release things. And Dean from the side is saying, did you ever measure that? I'm like, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching them how to do it. I'm not actually doing it myself. So this is a clear case of me saying something but not actually doing it. Um, and so he comes up on stage, I'm going down and he's talking about something else. And then he turns to me and says, did you already measure it? I'm like, oh, he's serious. He's actually expecting me to, to check it. But it's so obvious. We've, we've moved those advanced topic articles from an obscure place to right by the big picture. Obviously, people are finding them more, but he seems to be serious. He might call up on me again on the class. So I, I went and looked in the data and, and um, people were actually going 50% less to them as we put them right by the big picture than they were before. Um, so that was, yeah, a clear case of why measuring what we're doing is important. But, but they're still not finding them. So we, we elevated participatory budgeting to an actual icon on the big picture so that people find that, that topic article and that they can uh, understand more about what it's doing. And then DevOps and the continuous delivery pipeline. This has been a, um, a longstanding saga that I'm hoping is now better but I don't know. With, with 4.5, we introduced, we introduced DevOps in the continuous delivery pipeline. And we were trying to create an icon that would capture this, um, this concept of the flow across the delivery pipeline. And so we created this triple infinity loop, but the way it was rendered caused people to think this was three separate circles. So we turned it into these dots with the arrows moving through them, which got people even more confused because the arrows didn't make sense. They were going one way in some of the circles. They were going other way in the other circle. And they were like, what's going on there? So finally, we had a better artist, I think, right now who could actually figure out how to render this as a triple infinity loop. So now you can actually see the arrow going through the triple infinity loop coming all the way back. And then the other part was the iterations. Um, back in 4.5, we see how the old iteration icon. And people thought that when we had... CE, CI, CD, continuous exploration, continuous integration, continuous deployment. That means throughout multiple PIs, I had a PI of exploration and then a PI of integration and then a PI of deployment. It might seem ridiculous, but that's how people were reading this because it was standing right on top of the PIs. So you can clearly see there's a PI of exploration, a PI of integration, a PI of deployment. And right here at the end of the second PI, we're going to release. It says release on demand, but it doesn't matter. We're going to release every two PIs. So we changed it in, in 5.0 to have this kind of icon that says there's a CE, CI, CD in every iteration. That still wasn't clear enough, apparently. So now we have this triple infinity loop in every iteration, saying there is CE, CI, CD in every iteration. And we moved the released back to where they were in the past, right above those PIs and iterations to show that, that there is a, a, a very clear distinction between the, uh, the, this is clearly a release on demand. You can release at the boundary of an iteration. You can release in the middle of an iteration. You can release at the end of the PI. That's still a completely valid thing, but really trying to, um, to, to change the visualization. Um, we've also done a small thing that I'm gonna touch on more later, but we've, we didn't wanna change DevOps. It's in too many places and it's, it's a term. And this was a huge discussion. Should we change this term from DevOps to DevSecOps? Sec is a real thing. We wanted to surface it, but changing the term, I don't know, people, th there was concerns about that sometimes. So we left it as DevOps here, but we put Sec in the, in the middle. So it's DevSecOps. It's still there. It's still an important part of, of, of what we're doing and, and we're focusing on it. And then, oh, wait, let me see something. Oh yeah, that's fine. And then um, those, those same solution boxes that we saw in the portfolio, we also have them right here in the essential level. Uh, we have them here and we've changed that icon from the generic solution icon that has been going with us for many, many, many years to the new icon that we introduced with the Agile product management class. 
that talks about the fact that, that this is that, that, that gives some guidance around the solution. Talks about the importance that it's viable and 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 feasible and sustainable. And and so we use the same iconography to represent the fact that that this is what we're trying to build and 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 this is what we're changing. We also change this bottom left part. It said business dev ops support. And the reason was to show that these agile teams could be many, many types of teams. People still took them as very literal. So if it's business and dev and op and support, so it can't be, I don't know, whatever they had in their mind. It can't be compliance. Well, it could. It could be compliance people here, but it doesn't say compliance. So we needed more surface and more place to write about it. So now it's changed to business and technology. And there's a new article there talking about the different kind of business teams. And this is somewhere where we're hoping is going to grow with say five. This is one of the surfaces that we, we, we expect to change a lot of. Um, and right now it's, it's going to be, it's fairly limited. There's just one article, but you can expect to see a lot more articles appear in the future around the different types of business teams. Agile marketing is his own article. Um, Agile HR, Agile finance, Agile, I don't know, yesterday, Chris, our CEO, was talking about safe hand gliding. I, I don't know if that's a new thing, but uh, apparently for our CEO it is. So maybe there'll be an article about that sometimes. I'm, I'm hoping there won't be. So we've made that change as well, which I think is important. And then this one's an interesting one. We're starting with five that we went away from the program level. And we're going to keep diminishing the word program slowly, slowly, slowly um, until eventually it, it probably will disappear completely from, the, from, from safe. So um, we've, right now we had program increments. Now it just says PI. We had safe program consultant. Now it just says SPC. Now it didn't, they didn't all go away. There's a program backlog. It's still here. What do you think it might evolve to? If you had to guess about what was coming in 5.2 or 5.3, what do you think that's going to be? No one wants to play your game in that. No, it's not, I'm, I'm just going to wait longer. <laughs> it's people you taught, and they should have an idea about, they should have opinions and ideas about what the program backlog might change into. I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> you all know you're on mute, right? <laughs> <laughs> Take a guess. It's not that hard. It would be too easy to say um, feature backlog, wouldn't it? But, but it might. So, <laughs> so you might, but, but if we have a team backlog, so it might change into a story backlog. But let's say it stays a team backlog. What would you call the other one? Uh, very good. A train backlog. Train backlog. Sure. Yeah, yeah. an art backlog. So, so don't be surprised. <laughs> if in the future, program backlog is going to shift to be an art backlog. But to be fair, feature backlog was also mentioned as an idea. So, and, 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 and so some of those things are still there. It didn't all go away. But we're seeing a lot of negative connotations that people are drawing from program, and they're still trying to run them the old way. So we're trying to minimize that. And honestly, it's weird. Some of us are taking some of the things for granted. But I know so many people who don't even know what PI stands for. It's a PI. We have PIs. What's a PI? Uh, it's a PI. They don't even know it's a program increment. So some of those changes are easier. Some of those changes might be harder. Dean is still really angry with me and Alex and Richard, which doesn't hurt Alex and Richard because they already left the company, but it's not great for me because when we were working on 4.0, he wanted to change PIs to quantum. <laughs> But nobody liked that in math. It wasn't just you guys. Nobody liked that. But he keeps telling us, if it was quantum, it would have been quantum planning and quantum backlog. It wouldn't be in this mess right now. And we're like, yeah, that's right. But nobody liked quantum. Nobody wanted the quantum planning. So could, couldn't win that argument. It's, eventually, it's always my fault at the end. Um, we've also kind of, if you look, we had those, those really big PI boundary lines in the past. And they're 
they're faded. They're still there. They're still, here is the end of the PI. There's a PI planning. There's an INA. There's the system demo. It's all still here. But we've kind of de-emphasized them because, again, people are taking them in the wrong direction as a, this is a hard and rigid stop or we're going to do everything and everything's going to wait for it or this is the only time where we're going to uh, plan and this is the only time where we're going to replan and this is the only time we're going to demo and this is the only time when we're going to release. And that was really not the intention. The intention was a lot more system and flow. So we de-emphasized those lines and made them more. It's now easier to see that these are all iterations that are flowing one after the other. Well, at some point, yes, there's a PI planning and there's a PI planning here. And some of those iterations are different. There's the IP iteration, but it's it's more similar than it used to be. So, so that's a, a good shift. So before I go to some of the deeper updates, what questions do you have? And this is the quietest Australian group I've ever met in my life. And they're not normally this quiet. Mm. It's not even Monday. I know. But nothing, bro. Don't good. Know I, maybe I'm just that good. There are no questions because you know I'm what? Good. I think you probably are. I think you're probably just that good, Imba. <laughs> That's fine. In in bar, I think I I think I may be missing it. You may have explained it, but the the reason to de-emphasize program is because of the view that it has a beginning, middle, and end? Or what, why, why do we not like the word program? So different places were taking us in different, different people were taking it in different places. Some of the people were taking in the fact that, well, there is a program and this is the program increment. So uh, the, the, the emphasis of the PI lines were, was to uh, try to get away from, we're only releasing at the end of the PI or we're only ever looking at things at the end of the PI and I'm gonna only gonna show up to the system demo. Yes, they're here, I see them, but I don't really care about it. I'm only gonna show up at the end of the PI. Mm -hmm. But the other places we've seen, we've seen a lot of places that were taking program to say, uh, well, it's a program, I'm a program manager. It's mm -hmm. pretty much what I'm used to. It's gonna be the same. Mm -hmm. um, these are the same old programs. And this was used sometimes as an excuse not to do things. And sometimes as a battering ram where people were trying to move away from uh, to a more, where people were trying to say, don't do safe, do DevOps. How do you know that safe isn't very agile? Well, safe has programs. Clearly mm -hmm. anything that has the word program is, is, is deep waterfall. There's no reason not to trust anything that uses the word program. So there's have been a lot of misrepresentation in the, in the, industry that is that has caused us to move from that plus it, it started making less sense i mean we used to have a, a safe program level there was a program this whole thing was a program and there was a program level and a team level and then we made them one level and then we took away the word program and and when we took away that word program here it, it kind of became weirder and by the way program backlog is not the worst place we have it i think the worst place is in the values there's program execution great Program execution, what's a program? Um, we don't have a program anymore in SAFE. We just keep, like, it just stayed there. And it's just became this anachronistic thing that, 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 that we need to solve at some point. And it's just really hard to solve because what do you change program execution to? Execution? I don't know. That sounds like a crappy core value, but, but we need to change it because it's driving the wrong questions. And, 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 and that word here in the corner is just gone. It, it was gone with 5.0. We just didn't do the, the next step, which we probably should have with 5.0 because it was a big change. That was a great place to make that change. But it's, it's, it's so easy to be smart in hindsight. That's okay, pivot without mercy or guilt. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so let's go a little bit deeper at some of those things. And let's start with the operational value streams, which I think is one of the interesting ones. Before we used to say there are operational value streams. Uh, what are they? Well, they're operational value streams. That's how you kind of use the product. But we never really went in talking about specifically what they are and, and the different types of operational value streams. And with, with, with that was with the new update, we're, we're going deeper into this. There is a whole section in implementing safe that goes deeper and, and shows different types of operational value streams. Now, by the way, it doesn't mean that these are the only possible types of operational value streams, but these are examples of of possible to, to get people thinking in, 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 in that direction. So for example, there's the fulfillment operational value stream. There is the 
I I want to get a loan and I'm getting a loan or I want to order a book from Amazon and I got a book from Amazon. There's the fulfillment type of, of operational value streams that eventually with the development value stream, we need to build that operational value stream. And, and we, we took the whole concept of operational and development value stream from Word. And Word used, says in his book, he says, the goal of a development value stream is build a consistently profitable operational value stream. So if it's a fulfillment value stream, that means how do we build a, a successful, profitable fulfillment business? How do we build the fact that 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 uh, if uh, that how do we attract customers? How do we let them create a loan applications? How do we check their eligibility? How do we extend the loan? How do we get the money back? How do we close the loan? How do we make this whole process really effective and really efficient? That that will be a goal in a development value stream. The other type that was always confusing people was, was cyber physical systems. I, th- I, I can't remember a single class I taught in the last, I don't know, four years where I didn't have to explain that if you're building cyber physical system, your operational value stream is manufacturing. People were, were creating seriously the wrong operation value stream, which is driving them to the wrong development value streams. But if, if, we're, if we have a new thing, let's say a car, because it shows a car in the picture, our goal in the development value stream is to create a consistently profitable manufacturing operations. How do we build the parts? How do we manage inventory? How do we assemble the product? How do we um, um, ship it? How do we get it from, a, I have an idea, I have a demand, to I get it in the customer's hand. We're responsible for building this whole process so that it's, it's efficient. And then it could be a software product operation value stream where people just, it's, we're not fulfilling anything per se. It's not a, a physical thing that you're getting like a loan or a, or a book, but I'm, I'm, I have a software product that somebody is ordering and I'm delivering it at the end. And we need to, again, build that operational value stream. And then the last one is kind of a supporting operational value stream. So... Um, we have operational value streams that are supporting other parts of the organization. This could be an annual audit requirement, but this could also be, think about HR for a second, I think maybe an easier example for people to understand from, uh, people don't like this term, but I'm going to use it anyway, like from hire to fire. What is the, what is the whole value stream of, 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 of HR in an organization? It's a supporting value stream. It's not something we sell like a software or a vehicle or a loan, but it's a, an inherently really important process in our organization. And somebody needs to make sure it's built correctly and built effectively. So I think this, this change really focuses on two things. One, there are multiple types of operational value stream and you should think which one's more relevant for you. Is it a fulfillment one? Is it manufacturing? Is it we're creating a software product? Is it a supporting operational value stream? But then I think that over time, this will allow us the surface to start talking about the fact that as a development value stream, we're not just creating a software system. We're creating a profitable operational value stream. If, if, this, if there's a... a, a between the time that I complete the loan application and the time that we're making a decision, there's a one year gap here because of inefficiencies in this process. It's our responsibility to develop a value stream to think about how do we improve the operation of value stream? That's part of our responsibility. So, so this drives, a, I think, a, a deeper part of, of what is safe. And then the development value streams, again, are, are the things that, that are creating those, those patterns for how do we how do we create that operation value stream? So it could be a digitally enabled product or service pattern for the loan or the book. We're creating the pattern for how to run this operation value stream. It could be the software product pattern. We're creating the pattern for how to be able to fulfill as well as the product that we're fulfilling. It could be the manufacturing pattern where we're creating the the blueprint and sometimes the machinery of what actually gets gets used for testing parts and manufacturing parts. And then the, the pattern for what's the, how do we run uh, um, a, a, an operational value stream and how do we go through all the steps of it and, and what, are the, wh- what does it take? And that still means the people and the systems that it takes to do that. That, that hasn't changed, that's still important. 
but these are there are multiple patterns of development value stream that will usually map better. So now we're providing more guidance for people to look and say, well, I fall here, so probably this is the type of development value stream I need, or I fall here, so probably this is the type of development value stream I need, and more examples of, of how this works and how to use it. The other part that came with it is we started using a lot more around the, the team topologies parts of the book. Um, this book came, I think, a year and a half ago or something like that, um, and, and really made us think about the different types of teams. Before that, we had uh, a long time ago, we had a, a, a part in, in leading safe where we used to talk about feature teams and component teams. And then we kind of took that away. It didn't take the problem away, but it took the conversation away, which usually a huge red hole just took us all down. And, and, and now, and, and, but we stopped talking about the importance of, of rethinking about how you build your teams. So with, with this update, we have a whole more topics talking about the different types of teams, which are stream aligned teams, Team, teams that are aligned around the flow of value, complicated subsystem team, a team that's really focused on a specific subsystem and have the deep specialty knowledge and expertise to make that work, a platform team that is creating a platform that other teams are using to do their work, and then an enabling team whose role is to assist other teams, create things that and, and, and educate others in how to use them. But eventually it's the responsibility of the streamlined teams, the complicated subsystem teams and the platform team to use whatever the enabling team is using. And a system team, by the way, is an example of an enabling team, but there are other types of enabling teams that are creating the, the, the tools, the uh, processes that, that other teams will do. And we're using the same nomenclature, not just for teams, but also for arts. So before that, we had feature area arts and, uh, and, and uh, platform arts. Now we're using the same thing. There's a stream aligned art. There's a complicated subsystem art. There are platform arts. And I, I have yet to see a lot of those, but I'm, I'm guessing we could even see the emergence of enabling arts that are just building things to enable other arts and, 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 and not, not even a platform, but really a, a set of, of um, patterns that they then teach and, 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 and use other arts. In theory, I think that's actually a decent example that can go in here. Um, mm -hmm. We've seen places where, where the entire transformation was run as an art. You could see that art as, a, as an enabling art. They're there to teach people how to do safe and then, but they're not part of the actual solution building. I've seen people do um, kind of DevOps um, enablement, so tooling, um, sure. and um, and uh, cloud sort of tooling, so that sort of stuff across the enterprise, enabling yeah. all the arts. They're kind of enabling the system teams on the on the arts, which is it was interesting. It was interesting at the time. Yeah, and 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 I've I've seen patterns and anti patterns around that. But in theory, if you had that, you're right. That that would be an, an, an enabler art. Mm. So I think that's that's one of the biggest shifts we've made is around here. Um, we have more guidance on participatory budgeting, but we, honestly, we have some of it in, in, um, in, in we had some of it in, 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 in implementing safety before, but just getting a little better at defining what does participatory budgeting mean and how do you start it? And you have to understand the total budget and the BSI and PSI. And I'm not going to go deep in participatory budgeting because that by itself is probably, I, I can go an hour on participatory budgeting and how to run it and what I've seen happening around it. But we, but we do provide now more guidance around how to prepare for the event, how to get people there, how to actually conduct the, the different forums, how to analyze the results, how to understand what should be budgeted and what shouldn't be budgeted, um, what's partially budgeted, what does it mean if something is partially budgeted by some people but fully funded by others, so really going into some of those things and, 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 uh, and analyzing them. But now we have the surface, and there's an article that you could just go on, 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 on the new big picture and read about it. DevOps is the other one like DevSecOps, is the other one like the, um, the business teams. So now we're getting to a point where there are maybe three 
landing pages in safe that that serve as a place where, or for, sorry four landing pages in safe where you go to to find deeper articles around it the first one was the implementation roadmap when you click the implementation roadmap you get to a landing page that has more details about the implementation roadmap and launches you into the different articles that are different parts of the implementation roadmap the second one was safe in government which takes you to a landing page to learn more about different parts about safe for government and then right now we're adding two more which is the business and technology ones and then the DevSecOps one, which has in it article around Commer and article around, um, uh, around uh, some overview of, the, of, of DevOps, but we're gonna add more and more there around the different practices and going through some of the value metrics and, 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 and some of the deeper things that exist here. Um, and, and we've never had time to write about like continuous security and, uh, and continuous quality, they will actually appear here. So this is another place that as we're evolving say five, expect to once in a while hear from us on a blog or, or, or um, Twitter or somewhere else and go and find more articles there. So that's another one where we're, um, where we're having that, uh, that we're having the, where you will see more improvement. Yeah, I see uh, the, the comment in chat around the, the, the benefit of not having an enabler art in the diagram is that people, this will uh, help people have the entire pattern of, of all the enablers are in the enable art. Yeah, that, that definitely could happen. Um, this has always been a challenge for us. Things that we don't put in the, that we put in the diagram sometimes drive to anti patterns, but things we don't put in the diagram leave people kind of wanting and then kind of reinventing themselves. So maybe it's, sometimes it's better not to put it, sometimes it's better to put it and call out specifically, don't pull all the enablers into the enabler train. But that's literally put it out there. Um, I, I don't know which one's better. For now, this is what we went with, but maybe it requires rethinking. Enablers and, and all enablers go to the system team is a the common anti-pattern even before team, um, team topologies. Co completely. So now imagine we renamed it to call, to call it the enabler team. It's not, we didn't do that, but imagine it's now called the enabler team. It's more likely to happen if, even now, yeah. Um, and so, and, and the other one, as I said, is the business technology lending page. Uh, there's already some stuff there around agile HR and marketing and contracts, but this is another place where expect to see more, <clears throat> more going in and more depth being added all the time around different types of businesses and, uh, and more domain specific knowledge. This is another place that you should expect to see more and more in the future. And then finally, we've updated some of the courses already. Um, uh, implementing, leading, lean portfolio management, safer teams have all been updated to 5.1, um, new CDEs. We've also changed a lot of the other stuff in those courses. So as you're teaching them, you'll see that there's a new graphical representation to the courses. Um, there's a new way of looking at the um, objectives and topics that you're covering. So really uh, not just learning objectives, but now topics. Um, the leading CDEs are much better because I didn't do them. So Andy did them and they're so much better for that. Um, and 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 there, I'm even hearing the talk about CDEs for implementing safe. So, I mean, Adrian, maybe at some point you'll have to watch to watch the CDEs and watch watch us do those things too, which sounds horrible, but things happen. Um, so we've put a lot of those things in place, uh, and and we're gonna keep evolving them. And as we're opening courses, we're also we're fixing them, but we're also fixing them for other things, like in this. In this quarter, we've, we've opened the RTE class. This is one of the last classes that we haven't um, remotely enabled it. Now, I know some of you have, have already figured some of that out and are, know how to teach it remotely, but this is one of the last courses that we haven't opened up there. We haven't opened up, we haven't remotely enabled DevOps and RTE and um, an ASE and Safer Government. Um, not going to talk so much about ASC and safer government, but we have ideas around them, but um, DevOps and RT are coming. We're working on them right now and we're both uh, tying them up to 5.1 and as well as making them remote enabled. And then some of the toolkits. Um, 
are, are we've we've re, we've already changed some of the toolkits. The value stream and audit identification one is probably the biggest change, incorporating all the knowledge that I talked about right now. And then the new team formation toolkit that helps team form and takes them through those concepts of the um, the team topologies and really how would you using that. So I think that's it, yay. Um, and and we got through it in the in the time box with some questions in the middle, and there's still more time for more questions if you have. Thank you, Imba. Folks, the, the floor is open. Hey, just uh, it's a shame here. More, just more, to... more a comment than a than a question. It was just, and I've put it in the. I'll just talk to what I put in the chat, and that was the explanation of the operational value stream resonates with me, because the organisations that I've worked in just saw it as a, the developers did it in IT. So I had great difficulty convincing them that um, no, it's probably more important for outside IT than it is inside IT. So yeah, I'm just saying yeah, yeah, that's the slide. Yeah. Shane, you were starting to say something? Yeah, I was just uh, just on the slide around the, the different, like the products and services and the, the team, uh, which is one of the challenging, you know, ones that uh, we face as well. When you talk about, yeah, the, uh, yeah. So in that context, when we talk about product teams and services, um, a little bit new to how we have structured the, the value streams, or in operational value stream, how that translate to the products and services. Is there any guidance on that, on how we actually translate them uh, for like Greenfields trying to figure out in an existing organization to arrive at the products and services that, that might be involved? Because there's a lot of ways we were looking at from business architecture and other means, uh, the different lenses, but is there any, any article that you can point or gate towards how we translate uh, from that, from, uh, in that context? So I think some of the new articles around, uh, uh, there's a new article on operational value streams and one in development value streams. So I would definitely go and read those. And then as it says here on the bottom, there's a new article, advanced topic article around organizing agile teams and arts, mm -hmm. team topologies and scales. It talks both about these concepts of the teams, but also these concepts for the train that I think would be interesting to read. Thank you. Sure. We're a quiet group this evening. How late is it? It's it's early. It's um it's one o'clock. Six? Yeah, almost six p.m. Maybe it's too early. Maybe it was too close to the end of the workday. Maybe there's not enough drinks. There's not probably enough drinks. Is not enough drinks. <laughs> Four o'clock on Friday would have got a whole different reaction. <laughs> um, but you've been very tired. So. No, I think it makes it makes sense. It, it's some good uh, good changes, and thank you for explaining them to us. Sure. And again, I think part of the biggest message is this is going to keep evolving probably faster than we've been used to. So I showed some places like the business technology or the DevSecOps or the uh, or the operational value stream where I would I would keep looking at this and expecting to see more changes appear here and here and here and here. So keep track with us. It's going to evolve, I, I, I think, faster than it did in the past. What's your feeling on um, the how often you're going to refresh the big picture? Because I'm assuming that's what's you know, the 5.1 there. You change the, the big picture. So, you know, for, for all of us who, go, who, you know, maybe one day we'll actually go back into real classrooms and, um, you know, print out the fabric big pictures. You know, do I need one for a new one for every class? Or uh, <laughs> it, it's it's a good qu question, and I think I think what we're trying to move right now is before it was every time we want to refresh something, we have to refresh the big picture. I think our newest thinking is we can release things between those things, and we're going to release it after the big picture when we need to change something in the big picture. So right now we needed to make sure we were surfacing DevSecOps or business teams, but as long as we have the surfaces here, we're we're not going to release this. 
but let's say right now the next thing that's going to come up i don't know um let me let me pick up on a on a topic um that we're working on let's say industrial devops so if industrial devops is important enough to surface here it will we'll make a change and we'll release a 5.2 so i could see this happening as as little as it did before like once a year or as often as once a quarter so it really depends on, on, on what's coming up and how, how important is it to make the graphical change as opposed to the, uh, the just, just write some content behind it. Specifically, I think one of the things that, that will come at some point will be a kind of a bigger change is that place where we'll take away program completely. We'll change the program backlog, we'll change the everywhere that the program still exists. Uh, we'll, we'll take it away. When you click PI, it won't say program increment anymore even in the article it will just say api um that is coming and that will require a graphical change can you provide little sew on patches for my for my um fabric poster so that yeah. Order. Yeah. yeah that, that yeah. sounds great you, 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 you just you can just put it on top of it yeah a little velcro it'll be a little, little velcro. Yeah. <laughs> honestly if i'm looking at this big picture if you took the 5.0 if I, if we created a, a sticky for operational value stream a sticky for pb a sticky for the solutions a sticky for the solutions here a sticky for devops um, um a sticky down here and maybe like a big sticky in the middle you this, could patch the big picture you could, you could patch it <laughs> Got to go you patch it by yourself just get some duct tape it'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll send you. Uh, uh, so a long time ago in a conference, I, I ran a session with Tamara Nation, um, where it was we we took all the things, the things here in the on the spanning palette are meant to mean the fact that everything here could exist on any level. You could have a vision, a portfolio vision. You could have a large solution vision. You could have a program, uh, uh, an art vision. You could even have a team vision. You can have a roadmap at every level. So everything here could span every levels. So we actually printed out, we gave out big pictures, and we gave out a sticky sheet. We could take out a sticker and customize a big picture to what was made sense for them. They would put roadmap where they needed roadmaps. They would put visions where they needed visions. So we could we could we could do and an, 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 I, I play a lot of board games. We we're talking earlier about the, being a gamer. So a lot of the time when you release a version two of a game, of a board game, you will actually be able to buy a kit of patching the old game. Maybe we should do that. <laughs> like patches. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Just, um, just yeah, a sure. quick one on the DevOps, uh, since you uh, mentioned uh, Shane here again. Um, sure. You can bring up the DevOps uh, the slide that you had. There was a question when we were looking at the slide or this one on the, on the website uh, around the infrastructure management and configuration management, why that circle was um, you know, not within the deployment pipeline and you know, why that um, boundary or that, that, sec that circle was there. Can you just give a bit of insight on, on what that sure. really means to you? So what we're trying to do here is, again, there's the outward blue is still talking about continuous exploration, continuous integration, continuous deployment, con release on demand. The inner ones were always there, by the way, in the DevOps class. I'm talking about the, what does it take to do good continuous exploration? We need to do hypothesis. We need to do collaboration. We need to do architecture. We need to do synthesis. But then there are practices that actually span multiple parts. They are not just around the one part here. So for example, um, configuration management. Configuration management doesn't, doesn't, is not just in continuous integration. It's not just in build. It, it spans a lot more of this. Um, and so what, what we're trying to do with the inner circle is talk about some of those practices, um, some of the practice domains that cross, that cut across um, these green things and, and are relevant for all of them. For example, value stream management, that's true for everything. Continuous quality, that's true for everything. Um, value metrics is where we'll try to do some of the hypothesis of what we're doing in continuous exploration and all the way to the measure and learn and, and release on demand. So it's showing here how it's covering that part of it. Um, agile product management. But then as you're talking to infrastructure management and configuration management, what we're trying to show is this is not just configuration management is not just something you need to consider in the build part or in the stage part. No, this is something that spans across the, 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 the specific um, parts of the continuous delivery pipeline. And, and it's a component that, that again, transcends this and, 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 and is part of multiple of them. So instead of saying, which we did before, 
and, and I still do, if you double click into build, I need configuration management. I need version control here. Wow, that's true. But you also need version control for your architecture. Well, that's true too. I also need version control for my deployed version. So that's also true. So instead of that, version control now appears here is something that, that spans, you need to take care of it throughout the entire life cycle and not just think of it in one of these rubrics. So this is like a, a kind of a, you double click on continuous integration, you get to this thing. And then you double click on this, you get into various components that can overlap between some of those green aspects. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the, the difficulty for us was around the infrastructure management and when it, we are in actually SaaS, fast cloud world and that management, how that fits in into the deployment pipeline and how we can you know, uh, provide that. Info. But that's, that's perfect. Thanks it, for that. It, and what I'm hoping is that, again, this is where you will see eventually maybe this will become its own like small picture where I click on infrastructure management and there'll be a whole article on infrastructure management. I'll click on configuration management. There'll be a whole article on that. And we can actually expand our, 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 our before we had one article on continuous exploration, one continuous integration, one continuous deployment, one release of demand, one of commerce. Now this could span into a lot more article that we can go deeper into each one of those topics and, and, and provide more guidance on them. Perfect. Thank you. Hey folks, as is often the, the case, we um, get about an hour in and we start to, to lose some folks. Um, so just last call for the questions for Imba. Actually, I'm Yeah, sorry. Sorry, it's Riz here. I don't actually have a question, just a comment. Uh, it's already answered. The continuous security that I see, because I had the similar thought that it's part of the entire development process. And I see that it's in the core. Uh, it spans across all four. So I think this diagram explains it very well. Yeah, if I could. Just ask a quick, ask a quick question. Um, I noticed in my trainer enablement, um, there was a course now called Welcome to Safe, I think it's called. It's one of the first ones that appears after you log in to your trainer's enablement and click on SPC. Um, of course. I think it's called Wel Welcome to Safe or something like that. Has anybody seen it? <laughs> It seems to be some I, I, overview course. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I noticed it a few days ago, um, the first time, and I thought, oh. So I had a look at the content. I didn't do it, but um, it looked like some sort of leading safe style course. And I went to have a look at the roadmap, the implementation roadmap, thinking it might actually be there, and it's not. So I don't know if anyone's done it or anyone knows about where it fits and where, whether it needs to fit um, and whether there would be any, um, you know, whether you guys would teach it or anyone would teach it or do it. <laughs> so I'm going to look at it right now. Yeah, I, I definitely noticed it. I actually just had a look now to make sure um, while you were talking uh, before and I saw it there. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called... Well, oh. Thanks. Yeah, so, so it's welcome to say 5.0. This is yeah. just the upgrade lesson that we had as people were moving from um, from 4. whatever to 5.0. This is oh, all the okay. upgrade. This is all the upgrade lessons there. Okay, so if you did say five the first time, it's not relevant really. No, this is okay. just for people who came from other places and needed to upgrade. All right, thank you. I was, I was stressed there for a second because I was like, a whole new course that I don't even know about is, is scary. Well, it's yeah, the first time I saw it there, um, yeah. which is weird because last year it wasn't. So, uh, and I hadn't done four. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that answers that question. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Would have been awkward. Yes, yes, it was. <laughs> All right, there's, there's, by the way, there's a lot of new stuff on the community platform. If you want to go look for them, there's connection to assessments. There's uh, connections to um, to um, more tools around the collaborate platform, and 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 so we've 
we've spent a lot of time next last year to really rejig some of those things. There's a remote trainer badge that you can get uh, after taking a remote trainer and uh, uh, e-learning. There's a, it's sitting right by that welcome to say 5.0. So a lot of cool stuff there, I think. Well, thank you very much, Imba. Thank you everyone for, for joining. Thank you so much. Imba for giving up your um, child run duties to, um, to to chat with chat with us. We we really appreciate it, and um, hopefully we can can get you back sometime to um, hopefully ask you some harder questions. I think this was let you off way too easy. So easy. That was like <laughs> easiest time ever. Um, oh yeah, thank you, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'll uh, I'll send out the the link to the recording for those who wish to relive um, Imbar's explanation of 5.1. And um, again, just thank you so much, Imbar, for, for joining us. Thank you, everyone.